Gary Rowett has returned to Birmingham City as the manager. I did not expect to be saying that this season, but really, why should I be surprised um, when it comes, A, to the championship managerial shenanigans and B, to Birmingham City, where it has been absolute chaos this season? I just had a look on my YouTube videos this season and... This is a regular occurrence, talking about the Birmingham manager. October the 9th, I did a video about John Eustace being fired. October the 11th, I did a video about Wayne Rooney being hired. January the 2nd, I did a video about Wayne Rooney being sacked. Uh, January the 8th, I did a video about Tony Mowbray being hired. And 20th of March today, we are talking about the return of Gary Rowett, who was at Birmingham uh, back in the day, unceremoniously um, fired, wasn't he, by Trillion Trophy Asia. Going to give all of my thoughts on that. Let me just say two things. With all these breaking news videos, um, I am off the cuff. I've watched the championship and covered it for many, many years on this channel. I know lots of stuff about it. Sometimes when I'm off the cuff, I may get one tiny bit of factual information not completely correct. Please stay calm and understand what we're doing here. Got to admit, I was a bit disappointed. Um, I had some Watford fans crying because I said uh, they'd had, I think it's like 20 managers under the Potsos instead of 19. Come on, guys, know what we're doing here and get your views in on the big picture. Don't worry about um, the need to correct someone trying their best to remember what can be very, very complex things when it comes to the championship and when it comes to Birmingham City and the managerial picture, particularly this season. The second thing I want to say that's really, really important, I'm going to talk about chaos. I'm probably going to criticise the Birmingham ownership for the way this season's gone. What I am not going to do is pretend that we have anything other than love for Tony Mowbray and that somebody stepping aside for health reasons from their job is just bad luck and bad news and more important than football. So if I say anything about chaos, obviously somebody becoming, you know, not healthy enough to be able to go to work, we're not alluding to that as, um, you know, kind of uh, the fault of Nighthead Capital, Birmingham's owners uh, who took over in the summer. Why don't we start right there? We're going to have to go back about I don't know, someone will tell me the exact year, 15, 16 or something, uh, to Gary Rowett's first um, appearance at Birmingham. But this season has just been insane, hasn't it? Um, so Nighthead Capital come in in August. In October, they're going to get rid of John Eustace. We've done this to death now. I think you know my opinion. He was doing a good job, but I respect the right of anybody who buys anything to be able to fashion it in the way they see fit in terms of, you know, oh, I bought it like this and I want to change it. I get that. Was it a good decision? I don't know. But certainly the decision to replace John Eustace with Wayne Rooney, just the Wayne Rooney bit of that equation was a terrible decision because he um, just crashed and burned really, really quickly. It was a dreadful uh, run by Rooney. Tony Mowbray was then kind of bought in as the safe pair of hands to get Birmingham to the end of the season. And now the safe pair of hands is being replaced with another safe pair of hands. And again, I am at pains to say that's not Nighthead Capital's fault. And obviously, Tony Mowbray's health is far more important than us talking about strategic um, moves by somebody running a football club. I just want to make that painfully, painfully clear to anyone who wants to pick that up in the comments. Um, so we now have Gary Rower. Um, let me just read the Birmingham statement or read off the Birmingham statement. Um, Tony Mowbray will take a formal medical leave of absence until the start of pre-season 2024-2025. We may see Tony Mowbray again. We may not. We don't know. It's been a bit hush-hush in terms of his health. So whatever he needs to do, I'm sure everybody will support. If he's back, amazing. If he's not, he needs to do what he needs to do. We all get that. So um, there you go. That's given me my years, hasn't it? 2014 to 2016, Gary Rower, um, very clearly named as an interim boss. But as I've just said, an interim boss can turn into a permanent boss, depending on 
whatever the circumstances may be in summer with Tony Mowbray's help. The decision was taken to act at the beginning of the international break. Um, Mowbray played a role in the identification of Rauer as the right manager. Um, that's a good way of, um, you know, kind of portraying Rauer as a, um, as a sort of heroic figure if, you know, the incumbent manager who's going away for health reasons is recommending him, then that's kind of good PR, which um, Birmingham's owners have not had too much of with their decisions this season. There we go. Tom Wagner. Um, oh, let me just read the other bit. Um, the medical absence will allow Mowbray to focus 100%. Um, assistant manager Mark Venus will also take a leave of absence. That's very interesting. And um, look, I'm an Ipswich Town fan and Mowbray and Venus met at Ipswich. So I'm a huge fan of both of them. But some people are assistant coaches and some people are head coaches and managers. And I did feel at the time, this is not revisionist history, that um, Mark Venus is very much the, the sidekick sounds unfair because it's a really important job, but he's not the lead guy. And I'm not surprised that um, he didn't really ever look comfortable and the results, as we'll go on to, have not been um, not been great. And that's not his fault. He was, you know, kind of dropped in it by the situation. But I get it. I do get it. Um, uh, Tom Wagner, what is he saying? Um, uh, best interest to appoint Gary Rowett to lead the team from the touchline for the final eight games of the season, blah, blah, blah. What's Gary Cook got to say? And he talk of no fear football now, um, Gary. We've definitely got fear football now when we look at the um, championship table, haven't we? And see where Birmingham have dropped to. Rout was the number one choice. Uh, we are pleased to welcome him back. Um, and that's it. Uh, we all look forward to welcoming Tony and Mark back to the club before the start of next season. So, um, you know, if we're criticising the PR when Rooney was hired and no fear football and, you know, maybe how Eustace was dealt with, they've, they've got it right here. It seems better thought out. They've made it very clear to be supportive of Mowbray. They've outlined the plan that he is going to be back. Um, whether that happens or not, we'll we'll look at the um, circumstances. They've paired Mowbray and Rower in saying that Mowbray recommended Rower, and um, they presented Rower very nicely. So um, all very very sensible. And let's just talk a bit about that history. What did it say? December 2016, where. This is just a delicious irony or storyline or narrative. Um, use whatever word you're comfortable with. That Gary Rower is returning because we will all remember Birmingham being in an eerily similar position that they were in this season back in 2016, where Trillion Trophy Asia, or I think they changed the name about five times during their ownership. We never quite knew who they were, did we? Um, so that's... Um, the fact that I don't even know what to call them is um, probably symptomatic of how their ownership went at Birmingham. But Rowett was there. Birmingham were hovering around the playoff picture. And they wanted Gianfranco Zola. And again, I reiterate, any owner that buys the club, in my humble opinion, has the right to change the manager. I've got no issue with that. The fact that at this same football club, two consecutive ownerships have, um, as I'm supportive of, remove the incumbent manager, but then replace them with somebody who's completely, you know, fallen flat on their backside. Um, well, read into that what you will. Um, so, yeah, Rowett was kind of the sympathetic figure in all of this, wasn't he, in um, in respects that um, Zola then took Birmingham. They plummeted down the table and were saved in the end by Harry Redknapp. At what cost, though? Because there was some crazy spending sort of done at that time, which really trailed Birmingham and Trillian right the way through to the end of their ownership, didn't it, in terms of that points deduction in 2018-19. That was when you talk about the three-year loss limit being exceeded. And Birmingham were the first people to be charged with. Talked a lot about profit and sustainability this week. Nottingham Forest and Everton in the Premier League this season. Hang on a minute. If we had two charged in the Premier League and none in the Championship this season, unbelievable scenes. So who would have thunk it? Anyway, supposed to be talking about Rower, and um, he kind of went away as the um, as the good guy 
in all of this and went off and took Derby into the playoffs and um, did jump ship, didn't he, uh, to go to Stoke. Everybody fails um, at Stoke. Um, and then he went to Millwall, where I think he did a good job. And we'll talk about his brand of football because we got this thing that we often get with um, pragmatic, safety first, cautious, um, set up to not get beat type managers where um, the trend is upwards but gets so far and then all of a sudden the fans start having this conversation of, well, hang on a minute, he's doing well, but um, what would happen if we were a little bit more attacking and we focused purely on scoring goals and winning as opposed to stopping goals and trying not to lose? And, you know, you can have your philosophical football view on that. And I can't agree or disagree with you because that's your view. If you if that's the way you want to set up a football team, then, you know, so be it. There are many ways to skin a cat, which is a horrible um, turn of phrase, isn't it? But Rowett left Millwall earlier in the season. He's been um, available and sort of kicking about on the, on the media scene. Obviously, very, very keen to get back in. Very um, experienced and... I would say respected championship manager, but we have seen um, with Kieran McKenna's success at Ipswich, even say Danny Roll and Marty Sifuentes at um, Sheffield Wednesday in QPR, we've seen even clubs struggling towards the bottom, particularly those two. That's why I'm highlighting them. Not go for your old firefighter. Oh, let's be hard to beat. Clever man management. Know the league. Um, tweak our way out of this. Those clubs struggling have not gone, even uh, Plymouth, Ian Foster as well, Swansea, Luke Williams. It's been young, process-driven managers rather than a Gary Rowett-type figure who's um, very much, right, I'm going to steady the ship here, make this side hard to beat, keep some clean sheets, get some draws, get some wins and take them to survival. So um, interesting kind of... Um, sort of outlook. And before we look at Birmingham's running and position on the table, the delicious irony, not the first time I've said that, is I think we would all agree. And he told us to our face because John Eustace disappeared on my channel on the Championship Checking Podcast, thanks to um, his friendship with Sam Parkin. And he told us his philosophy was to make teams hard to beat. And the irony that Birmingham had this manager, went away to try and do no fear football, went to Tony Mowbray and are now back with a, and you can compare John Eustace and Gary Rowett in whatever way you see fit, but is Gary Rowett not just the more experienced version in terms of philosophy of John Eustace? You tell me in the chat, is that a fair assertion? I'm telling you, I think he probably is. Um, Here is the disastrous picture though. Look at that. Birmingham have dropped all the way down from the edges of the playoffs. And I know they might have even been in the playoffs when Eustace went. I know Birmingham fans get a bit narky about that. And I think they're right to, because we need to say a few things about that. We need to say that it was early in the season and the table hadn't kind of figured itself out. And you can get teams who are up the top, who don't change their manager, who um, regress to the mean, if that's what Birmingham were going to do. Obviously. You're throwing the grenades that the ownership have done with the managerial changes. And um, it's hard to argue that because it's just been chaos, hasn't it? But I think they'd won back-to-back games going into that international break where Eustace got sacked. So I do kind of agree that, yes, there's been a massive drop down the table. Can't disagree with that. It's an objective fact. There's been a massive drop down the table. But I do kind of agree with the Birmingham fans that it was a lofty I don't, I don't believe in the term false position you are in a position that that you're in but i think there's mitigating circumstances but it's still a hell of a drop there they are level on points with huddersfield there on um 39 um i've already mentioned shepherd wednesday and qpr making managerial changes those sides are trending up stoke um look they've had a couple of wins and maybe they're stabilizing Plymouth and Blackburn have been trending down, haven't they? You would worry about those two potentially. And Millwall obviously just had that massive 10-point spike with their own managerial change. It's all interlinked. Obviously, Rowett was at Millwall. He was replaced by um, Joe Edwards, which is another irony in this tale. It's another club who 
went away from a pragmatic manager, wanted to open it up. It didn't work. And they go back to what they knew. Um, so you can compare Birmingham and Millwall in, in that respect for sure. What else you'll notice about this um, table is the ridiculously high threshold and the high number of points it's probably going to take to survive this season. Birmingham are over one point per game. They've got 39 from 38 games. Any other season, they probably wouldn't be in the trouble that they are in. And any other season, I would be looking at these remaining fixtures and it's normally 45 to survive. Can you get 46? Can you get a point per game? And I'm looking at thinking, well, if they get a point per game from their remaining eight games, uh, add on eight to 39, you get 47 and you think you're pretty well going to be safe, aren't you? No, not this season. We've said about the trends up from Sheffield Wednesday and QPR who have not been in that point per game form for a while, probably since December, I would say, for both of them. Um, you're going to have to outscore those two. Um, and then Huddersfield have had a managerial change. Maybe the results haven't um, stacked up uh, totally. What I'm saying is if you don't get this right, and maybe you might need 10 points from those remaining games, and you might need more like 49 than 47. Who knows? Um, but that's the way I'm seeing it. And if we look at Birmingham's run in here, QPR, woof. That's a six-pointer. Preston, well, they're going for the playoffs. Leicester away, ouch. Then Cardiff at home. Coventry will likely be going for the playoffs. <laughs> look at the last two. Rotherham away. We think they'll be gone by then. Um, and Huddersfield. Sorry, there's probably one more I'm missing off there for the um, final day of the season. That only says April the 27th there. Forgive me if I am wrong about that. Um, in fact, I'm just going to really, really quickly look up who Birmingham's last game of the season is against. But the overarching point that I am making is this is not as simple as, you know, keep some clean sheets, draw some games. You're probably going to need a couple of victories into the bargain here in these last eight games. At home to Norwich, they were also likely um, going to be going for the playoffs. And you're looking at the game against Rotherham. You're looking at the game against QPR and the game against Huddersfield. And you're saying, doesn't matter if you lose all the other games, can you win those three games, which takes Birmingham then with no other points, no other draws, would then go to 48. And that appears to be the challenge. Um, do I think this is a sensible decision? Well, look, the first thing we need to say about that, as I give my subjective opinion, um, is that it's not fair to compare with changing Eustace to Rooney or changing Rooney to Mowbray. Those were decisions that um, the Birmingham higher-ups decided to make because um, they thought it would be better than what they've got at the moment. This one they've kind of had to make, haven't they? I don't think it would have been fair to go through with Mark Venus. You can argue that Mark Venus has essentially been turfed out of the manager's job, but that isn't very fair, is it, on the Birmingham higher-ups with the situation with Tony Mowbray and his health. Um, do I think Rauer is a smart person to bring in this situation? Yes, I do. Um, could have got Neil Warnock, couldn't they? He would have loved the last eight games at Birmingham City. Uh, Rauer may be slightly less bombastic, a bit... Um, a bit less charismatic than Warnock. And you know the thing that, say, Warnock would have done, that Rauer, um, well, I'll go down this Warnock rabbit hole, won't do is Warnock will gamble for wins, whereas Rauer, 10 minutes out, if it's 1-1, he's taking the point and he's saying, on to the next and we will add another point on and, and bank up here. So I think he's a good guy for this job. Does it guarantee Birmingham survival? No. No, it absolutely does not, because that could be out of their hands in terms of, well, look, it's in their hands in respect of the fact that they're outside the bottom three now, albeit only on uh, goal difference by two. But the point I'm making is maybe not Huddersfield, but I believe Sheffield Wednesday are capable with the improvement they've made under Danny Roll of pushing up and out of that bottom three. And if Birmingham don't go maybe at that pace with them, maybe it'll be them that's replaced in there. So 
I will reiterate my point that I think Rowett is a good guy to do this job, but draws alone are not going to be enough here. And we used to laugh and joke with the Millwall fans when we were doing the predictions about, I think one season they were going towards the record of draws in the championship. And I reiterate, in any other season, yes, draw your way to survival. Get to 47 points or whatever it's whatever it's going to be. But I think he needs a couple of wins in those head-to-head games, doesn't he? So there we go. That is my take to summarise. Um, a, I think a sensible hire. Um, there's, as I say, delicious irony and narrative all over this. But does it guarantee Birmingham survival? I don't think so. I think he still needs to deliver, say, two or maybe... Look. If he, um, what's he got, eight games, if he wins two and draws three of those eight, probably going to be enough, right? Isn't it? Nine points. But it's all about getting those wins because I think other teams are going to have little splurges of four, four points maybe in two games or six points in three. That's what's been happening at the bottom of the championship that does not usually happen. That's why it's a fascinating race. That's why this appointment is fascinating. And I've given my opinion. Jesus, I've done 21 minutes on this. Um, Waffle, waffle, waffle. It's now time for you to have your say down there in the comments. What do you think of the hire? What does Rowett need to do to keep Birmingham safe? And do you think he's capable of achieving that? As I mentioned earlier on in the show, we had John Eustace on the channel. That interview is up on the channel. So I'm going to link it up there. Just as a comparison, listen to what John Eustace has to say about his philosophy on football and understand why I find it amusing that we've ended up here. Sorry, amusing is not the most respectful word, but why I find it interesting that we've ended up here with Gary Rowett returning as Birmingham manager.